Okay, so once again, the important question. Who do you think uh, and how do you think it's impactful for any of these guys and Dex uh, if uh, anyone loses or wins down? From what we have seen yesterday, uh, going first for Prentice is very good. But uh, if the opponent has like an Ash Blossom, for example, that will shut down completely their strategy. So on one hand, I would say that Mathieu would prefer to win the die roll, but on the other hand, Pierluigi is playing a lot of entry. So going second is not really a super problem for him because he's prepared enough for going second. But on the other hand, I think this was very good for him. So I think that now Mathieu, considering that he also had uh, like an overview of what he can be to play against certain type of players as yesterday, he beat Jay Quincy. Now I think that uh, he will have his chances. Seems like Pierluigi won the die roll, did a 9. I'm not sure if Mathieu rolled an higher number than 9, but we will soon see. Absolutely. And now, uh, I mean, we saw yesterday a lot of uh, back and forth, and I think uh, what really caught our attention was uh, Mathieu build with the Parallel Exceed. I think that card was the MVP. Uh, because we saw a lot of other practice players struggling with Entrops uh, and with the Parallel Exceed, uh, uh, I think we really, really covered it up, so... And on the other hand, I think that uh, considering uh, how difficult it is to play against Frank, it's... Uh, um, I will not be super, uh, super happy if I were, uh, if I were Luigi. Anyways, let's see. He has a lot of experience, and now he's starting things off with Fractal. Uh, I think it will, we will see the standard Tri Brigade combo here at the beginning with the normal summon of Kid. This is what is going to happen. Okay, yeah, this is what we have seen uh, all day yesterday. And uh, not a surprise, uh, unless there is an end trap coming down from Mathieu, we will probably see a revolt face down at the end of the turn. And uh, either an Apollosa, the, the big difference, uh, like uh, compared to yesterday, is that now these guys know what their opponents are playing. And this can change significantly their opening uh, turns. Especially because yesterday we talked about how difficult it is to beat in this format Tri Brigade because it's the most played deck. But on the other hand, I think that these guys playing prank hits uh, gave players a lot of uh, to think of because uh, we see how difficult it is to play against prank hits. And here we see already the first uh, unconventional play that we saw yesterday by Pierluigi amazing stuff he opened this exact field against his opponent which consists of Apollosa and the ancient warriors which is the only one uh, opening this field yesterday and showing us uh, again uh, today i think this is the best opening for the deck and i'm impressed with pierluigi uh, just uh, consistently doing the same thing uh, over and over again yeah i really like his approach because basically he just want to be sure that uh, he can negate as many cards as he can and then getting the Revolt plus the Ancient Warrior on the field, I think that uh, this is what he was waiting for. Yeah, and this is quite, quite oppressive. So uh, he has uh, pretty much five interruptions uh, with his opponent who must be really careful. So now the, the pressure is on Mathieu who is actually not uh, maining any interruptions for the Apollosa. We saw some players using the Droplet. But the Sire is definitely a good way to... Ooh, and the Ash Blossom! Wow, what a end from Pierluigi. Ash Blossom uh, definitely not expected uh, and uh, could hurt uh, quite a bit. Yeah, he can also effort to use Ash Blossom on the Desire considering that he has Ancient Warrior plus the Apollos. Absolutely. So now we see Pandemonium maybe coming down. We can't quite tell, but by the gesture it's probably a, a spell. Yeah. Or maybe just... Yeah. Yeah, it's Pandemonium. So, Pandemonium comes down. Uh, this is not that bad because at least it allows him to chain block uh, one Apollosa for one of the prank kids. And now Pierluigi must decide if he feels like he wants to activate the Ancient Warriors on the fusion. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting opening uh, by Mathieu. So, both players having actually pretty strong hands, I would say. 
Yeah, I think one of the reasons why Mathia is here today, because yesterday we against Jake we saw that uh, he really knows how to how to chain leak in cars and protecting them uh, from cars like Apollosa. Yeah. And uh, are you surprised they didn't use the Apollosa? Yeah, I mean. Uh... Maybe as a plan, maybe he will activate the revolt here, but I mean, uh, I would have activated the Apollo. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing is, I think actually Mattia had two of the same prank kids. Uh, because, yeah, he only activated one. So that's definitely very unfortunate uh, from uh, Mattia. Yeah. yeah, and I think Mattia has seen enough. Uh, he tried his best, but at the end of the day, the Ash Blossom, which maybe wasn't even necessary was way too much, uh, it stopped uh, immediately the play from Mathieu and uh, what a start from Pierluigi already only one game away from advancing to the top 4 I think this is pretty much what we saw yesterday game 1 was like the most quicker one let's say while the second game and the third game were really back and forth so, but, yeah, now we can finally get uh, to see the cars from Mathieu we were uh, talking about yesterday yeah, uh, I think now Mathieu will set in for sure the Solent Judgment and hopefully we will see a Pointer of Red Lotus in action, a car we haven't seen uh, so often lately. But it's a, it's a good tech. I mean, uh, if he happens to draw it uh, along with the Solent Judgment, I think... Uh... Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's one of those cards usually played by decks that uh, just need one turn. That's the whole point. Uh, if you know that there are a few cards that your opponent can uh, mess with, uh, like the Storm uh, and uh, just particular uh, interruptions. Uh, we know that Prank Kids is a deck that is really able to get an unfair amount of advantage if you let him uh, play. Yeah. So I think uh, it makes sense and I'm definitely uh, wishing that we will see it in action uh, later on. Huh? But for Pierluigi, what do you think he's bringing in? Well, on the other hand, Pierluigi looks like uh, maybe he will side in the Nibiru. He has the Schoolmeister and uh, I don't think he's going to side in any other cards because... Uh, yeah, I mean, his side deck is all three offs and uh, it is... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think these were the only cards that he could side in. Maybe he doesn't want to over side decking, so... Yeah. Do you think, uh, yeah, I mean, the, we, we mentioned yesterday that Ash Blossom on a normal summon at the prank is, uh, is quite annoying, but uh, uh, I think Schoolmeister is a card that we have not seen much, but is absolutely amazing at dealing with the same. So when you have six copies of the card, I think Pierluigi is actually one of the most prepared duelists this weekend uh, for prank kids. So let's just see. Uh, I think uh, our players are now ready and... Uh, Yeah, now War Mathieu is hoping uh, maybe just he can combo off without being interrupted by any of uh, Pierluigi's end traps. Let's see if it happens uh, to do so. Let's see. Yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned, uh, it's gonna be a matter of... Uh... Can Pierluigi open one of his uh, end traps? Uh, and uh, let me quickly check if he was playing the Gammas. I don't think so. Yeah, because he was playing Phantasme, which is something we have not seen at all. Uh, he's actually maining three copies of Phantasme. So interesting, uh, interesting choice. But okay, solid start from Mathieu with the place. And now again, uh, as we mentioned, does Pierluigi have an Ash or a Schoolmeister? And by the way, Mathieu is also playing the Parallel Exceed, so yeah. maybe that's not even a possibility. Let's see if he has the Exceed. It might be the case. No. no so, does Pierluigi have a response? He's thinking about it. He does. Yes. So, side deck already coming in and the Schoolmeister coming down to stop Mathieu in his tracks. And a set. Wow. Oof. We might have a quick match on our end with Pierluigi. Really putting in uh, some work with the side deck. Yeah, this is what we were talking about yesterday. Brankids is really hoping to go first, but not being entrapped, because otherwise, as we saw here with Schoolmaster or sometimes Ash Blossom, 
the combo is interrupted. Yeah, and now I really feel uh, sorry for Mathieu. The card face down is definitely not the Red Lotus, because we would have seen yeah. it. And we already see one of the other tech cards from Pierluigi, the Zonia Terrorblade. Great way to start. Yeah, when going second, especially this is um, something that happened yesterday as well. He didn't summon any of his uh, Zodiac Monster in game one, and maybe your opponent yeah. don't really know what he's doing. So now I think uh, we will also see the Zeus coming down. Yesterday we haven't uh, got the chance uh, to see Zeus in action because he always got striked. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this time we might see the Solemn, to be fair, <laughs> because uh, Mathieu is siding in Solemn Judgment. So let's see if a Zeus uh, is definitely. And finally, sticking, or if there's gonna be a Solemn, it doesn't seem uh, like that's the case. Which uh, kinda surprises me to... I guess, yeah, he's just playing around... Uh, I think it was a twist twister. Huh? Wow, that's uh, quite a surprise of a side deck card from Mattia going first in this matchup. And now this is tough, so not the strongest of opening from Pierluigi, but his main deck... Uh, uh, Tax uh, with the Zodiac engine uh, might just be that good. Uh, and now Pierluigi is safe. Uh, what do you think? Uh, would you use it right away here or can you just uh, wait? I think I would use it. I mean, uh, you know that every time. You... Okay. It lets Interesting. Him activate uh, his field spell. But he activates uh, another field spell and now the Zeus is looking uh, quite intriguing. We can see Pierluigi really debating whether he should use it. Uh, he might... Uh, yeah, Twister, that's really interesting. Yeah, I don't know, because maybe... Uh, I don't know, like, did he did he side it in? Yeah, I mean, it's... Maybe... Ooh, and an Ash Blossom, but on the place. Uh, which is something you rarely see. You usually hold uh, that card for the prank it's in Grave. Uh, uh, but I guess uh, Pierluigi is confident enough for now. He will let the Prankits uh, resolve and then he will probably activate the Zeus later on. But oh, hold wow. by the grave. Wow, what an end from Pierluigi. Absolutely destroying his opponent's start. Uh, who is now left with not many solutions. Uh, and uh, if uh, Pierluigi gets uh, even just a single Tri Brigade from the top, uh, I think the game uh, might be over. What a start from uh, the Italian. That is why he didn't activate this use. Wow, what a hand. Did he draw a fractal or... Uh... Okay, Kit. Yeah, and the Kit is just uh, amazing. He even discards it for oh, the Keras. Yeah, so wow. what, a, what a play. Uh, an Ash on the Kit, but... I think this uh, is, uh, is enough uh, even uh, for game if he doesn't want to play it risky. Just summoning an Omen, but... Let's see how frisky uh, Pierluigi is feeling. Uh, he didn't really take that many risks until now, and he goes on by banishing, I believe, three monsters. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel worried if I'm Mathieu, honestly. Yeah, I feel worried, especially because now Pierluigi can even consider to push enough damage for game. Because uh, he's only left with the Meow Meow on field. Yeah, he's far from playing around uh, Nibiru. Yeah. Because this is just a second summon for the turn. Uh, but yeah, it seems like he goes for access code uh, yeah. right away. And uh, this just seals the deal. I think Mathieu uh, doesn't have any possible response to this. Uh, Pierre Luigi already shocking everyone with one foot. In the semi-final already, enters Battlefield, attack with both, uh, and I think we see a virtual handshake. That's it, yeah. Pierluigi, I think with the fastest match uh, all weekend, uh, what a way to start. 2-0 for the Italian, the first player who qualifies for the top four. Wow, congratulations to both, uh, but now let's go back to us for the post-match discussion.